Welcome to the car guys and welcome to an adventure in this Porsche 911 GT3 Touring. I set myself the frankly stupid task of spending 15 hours straight driving this car. It happened yesterday and this is what happened. I'm mad for doing this. For some reason I've decided to spend 15 hours driving in my GT3 Touring. 15 hours! I've got an epic jaunt from the south of England into Wales for a supercar driver event. And then immediately after that I've got another event in the Cotswolds hosted by Targa Club. And I was going to take two cars but now I'm going to do both in this GT3 Touring which means the longest period I have ever spent driving this car continuously. And if you know anything about GT3s, and particularly GT3 Tourings, you will know that they are not the most comfortable cars in the world. I've got fixed bucket seats, I've got relatively hard suspension, it's very, very loud in here, and I'm going to be driving in what can only be described as a spirited fashion. I fully expect to be utterly physically destroyed at the end of this but I'm doing it for you because I thought you would be interested to know what it's like to live with a GT3 Touring, what's happening with this car, what it's like to drive on some of the best driving roads in the UK. You're welcome. Before we get started a quick wristwatch check. This week I have on a, a brand new Patek Philippe Calatrava 6007A. That's right, the new limited edition Patek Philippe. So if you want to find out a lot more about this watch, check out thewatchguys.tv. I've just come over the Severn Bridge into Wales. I'm now at Magor Services. I've been going about an hour and a half. Um, it's been a fantastic journey so far. I mean, it's literally like the opening scene from Le Mans with Steve McQueen. Roads completely empty, beautiful driving conditions, a little bit of mist, sunrise. Here's a top tip for you. If you want to have an incredible drive, get up at four in the morning and drive across the West Country. So I've got about another hour and a half to go before I get to the meetup with Supercar Driver. So here we are, I've made it to Wales, proper mining country, and we are on obviously some of the greatest roads that you will find anywhere in the United Kingdom. It took me about three hours to get here. Right now I am in a convoy of quite special super and hyper cars, courtesy of Supercar Driver. And the GT3 Touring and I are gonna go on a properly special drive through the Welsh countryside. We are being led by Martin, who is somewhat a bit of a mentalist in that Jaguar, and we also have a Kermit Green LaFerrari up front. So this is going to be an interesting day. What we need now is for this McLaren to stay close to the cars so we don't lose them. There you go, I think you'll agree, quite an interesting mix of cars. We have a green LaFerrari, we've got several Porsches, GTSs and GT3 and a GT3 RS. We've got a Cayman GT4, we have a Lamborghini Performante Spider, a 600 LT McLaren. So quite a nice mix actually. So we are really pressing on now made a bit of progress. I'm up behind the white Performante Spider now, which is doing pretty well on these sort of tight twisty bits, but boy, I mean these are just fabulous roads. You've got high hedgerows and uh, lovely smooth sweeping roads and it really allows you to exploit the GT3's colossal power and torque. The great thing about the Touring is the amount of confidence it gives you. The tyres give you just enough yield to sort of slip into a corner and just ride it all the way around. It doesn't feel skittish at all, it just feels smooth. It's like spreading cake mixture. It's just lovely. 
the steering weight up gives you the confidence really to pitch it into the corner classic old slow in fast out with a 911 now the only downside is of course you do get a little bit of sort of grit and things on these roads and Lamborghini Performantes are the worst car to travel behind if you don't want to get stone chips lovely little tractor moment there these are just perfect roads nice twisty sweepy roads some tighter corners but just allows you to just flick it out wide a little bit and then just ride the corner around it's just fantastic occasionally the apexes are tighter than you think which is a little bit of a hairy moment but because the steering is so direct you just make that correction and you're away I can just hear that Lamborghini popping and banging ahead of me. Oh, listen to that engine though. Oh, it's so good. We're sort of keeping it in third or fourth really on these sort of roads. This is where the heavy steering really pays because you can properly lean on it and it doesn't feel like it's scrubbing wide at all in any of the corners, it's just gripping and going. As with all these road trips, I've got the sat-nav on so I can see the map and see where the road goes ahead of me. A little bit bumpier this one, a little bit thinner as well, so potentially far more scary. You just can't beat roads in Wales, honestly, it's just fantastic. This is actually the first day that Wales has been opened up from the pandemic. They don't slow down, do they, these locals? They do not slow down. Oh, cattle grid. Ooh. Let's give it the beans. As long as you keep the revs high, it's endless power this thing and you've got to keep that engine singing otherwise there's nothing really below 3,000 revs and if I'm being honest you're not you don't get a huge payoff for going all the way up to 9,000 but the more I drive this car the more I get used to its handling characteristics and the more fun it is it just keeps rewarding you with layer after layer Oh, listen to it. That low down torque as well gives you a real punch. Oh, just phenomenal. Look at that. And we are motoring. And then into the corners, look at that. Long sweeping roads. It just sticks to the road like a limpet. So here we are at journey's end of the supercar driver Brecon Run here in the glorious Welsh Hills. A brief respite here and maybe a breakfast bath and it was time to get in the car again and drive two and a half to three hours over to the Cotswolds. This little number is most definitely a keeper. The only downside is the tiredness is starting to take its toll. Welcome to the Cotswolds. I've been invited by New Venture Targa Club for a driving event across the greatest roads in Oxfordshire. I'm in a convoy of approximately 30 cars, all different types, many classics. I suspect that the pace is going to be quite brisk. So we have an old Bentley up ahead. is a new driving club but also going to end up in 2022 being a hotel and storage facility so it's going to become a kind of one-stop shop for car guys now I didn't really know what mix of cars were going to come on this event so I chose the GT3 Touring because I wanted to stretch its legs on a longer run but having seen the sort of cars that are here today I think next time it would be the 1989 911 Turbo that would perfectly suit this group, I think. Or maybe the original Honda NSX. There are a few other more modern cars here,
but uh, by and large it's more about the sort of classic car there isn't for example a Lamborghini there is a Ferrari 365 GTB Daytona Spider. that's quite rare driven by a certain Dario Franchitti this was also the inaugural meeting and there is something quite special about being at the first of something about being there right at the start imagine what it was like going to the first Goodwood Festival of Speed for example must just have been amazing you can always look back and say yep I was there so what's happening to the Porsche 911 GT3 Touring well it's not been out much over the pandemic it has not had much action mainly because I've been enjoying my 718 Spider so much and therefore the GT3 has sadly languished in the car guy's garage. I've now done just over 10,000 miles in this car, which probably makes it one of the higher mileage GT3 Tourings in the country. But this is only the beginning because I'm going to drive and drive and drive this car until the wheels fall off. Here we go then. I mean, listen to it, listen to this. Oh, goodness me, honestly. I mean, this car has just got that raw aggression that you absolutely crave from a 911. This one has it all. I should also point out that when I got this car, one of the things that offended me the most was the red dials. I absolutely hated them, but I've got used to them now. Now that I've made a few changes to the car, PPF, decals on the outside, houndstooth interior seats. Now I actually think the red dials give it a little bit of personality and so they're staying. The most important thing now is what nickname do we give this car because essentially it's got bloodshot eyes. So perhaps Keith Richards, Pete Doherty, Johnny Depp. Why don't you suggest a name for this car? Maybe the best one will become its official nickname. So are there any other improvements to be made to this car? Well, I would say exhaust is not a priority. I do not think that this car in any way sounds deficient in the noise department. And I think it's got enough power for British roads. So actually, the answer is no. I think I'm pretty much finished. Therefore, the only thing to do is to drive the hell out of it. Let's give it some of the beans, full bore in second. Oh yes, oh yes, oh she's still got it, I'm sorry I'm not going to leave you in storage again, don't worry, this is where the GT3 comes alive, oh my god it's amazing, I mean, just listen to it, <laughs> come on, this is why I wanted the touring, to my mind, and I know it could be complete nonsense, but it sounds rawer and louder than a standard GT3. Am I making that up? Beautiful empty stretch of road, we're in a convoy of cars and we are, there's no other word for it, thundering through the Cotswolds. There are plenty of opportunities for maximum beanage on this trip. That's part of the reason why I decided to get up at frankly an insultingly early time to come and visit the Target Club. That's what we like to call a uh, finger-wagging local. He objected to us driving 60 in a 60 because we dared to do it past his convertible BMW. This is what it's all about. Now that we've, now that the lockdown is easing and we can all get outside, particularly stay outside at events like this, it is just great to be out with some car mates just having fun that is what it's all about this is what we've been wanting stuck in the pressure cooker of lockdown finally we can go out and release and enjoy our cars oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. goodness me one thing you'll notice about the car guys incidentally is that when we're accelerating hard both jason and i seem to make the same noise oh, hoo, 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 hoo. And of course, being a GT3, even though we've got steel brakes, it stops as well as it goes. Oh, look at this scenery, it's fantastic. Look at that. 
Oh, over a crest. Over a crest down to easy right, down to tight left, 150. I don't know. Yeah, that Aston has got way too much power. He pretty much just lit up the rears as he left that junction. Horses, always slow down for horses. The only thing that slightly niggles me about this car is that these buckets, beautiful and supportive as they are, are fixed in the upright position. So I probably need to get my spanner out and recline it just a little bit to make it more comfortable on long journeys. One of the things also that's interesting is that we've got all of these spectacular high-powered cars and yet no one's acting like a total bell end. Everyone is respectful of the road, everyone is respectful of each other. That makes a big difference. You don't have any hairy overtakes that put other people in danger. Everyone's out just enjoying their cars. Leading the convoy is Andy, who's the founder of the club, and he is in a quite sumptuous Safari 911. Very much like the one that Matt Farah's got. But that is a pretty cool machine, I have to tell you. Given the ingredients of the GT3 Touring, that flat six four litre engine, the smooth power delivery, that steering weight and the responsiveness that you get, that incredible gearbox. I just don't think I'm ever gonna get rid of this car. I mean it when I said it, I'm gonna put at least 100,000 miles on this car. Because why wouldn't you? It's such an engaging drive. It's so noisy and pingy and tingly and frizzy that you just want to drive it all the time. If you've got a great set of twisty roads, as we've just had there in the Cotswolds and in Wales, why would you not take the 911 GT3? This really is the car that delivers that grade A driver's nectar that we're all craving. I've just topped up on coffee, but I have to say I am starting to ache. As much as I love this car, I think by the time I get to journey's end, I'm gonna be destroyed. So that's it, 15 hours in a GT3 touring. My body is broken, my ears are bleeding, my back is shattered, my eye, I can hardly see out of my eyes, my arms ache from where I'm gripping the steering wheel, but what an utterly fantastic machine this is. It may have destroyed me physically, but it has enriched me mentally. But right now, I'm gonna have a glass of wine and then I'm gonna to go to bed. Please subscribe, leave comments and likes. You know we read them all. I'm not gonna read them now. And there'll be another Car Guys episode along next week. Good night.